What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out why Ronda Rousey sucked at being a WWE superstar. Now, this should be very interesting. I know we've checked out recently a couple videos talking about Ronda Rousey, but this one is strictly strictly focusing on her run in WWE and why this person uh feel like um that they weren't really good at being a WWE superstar. Now if I had to give my personal opinion before we even get into this, I do feel like um, when she first got into the company, it seems as if as if she was excited to be there. The fans were excited to have her there, and she was actually doing some pretty solid work with the ring in in ring work. Granted, she was being carried by obviously the veterans that have been doing, you know, been wrestling all their lives, but she didn't look too out of place. Now, her promos were always to be desired, and I honestly do think she probably would have been better with a mouthpiece of sorts because her talking segments were always kind of tough to go through, but people was okay with it because it's Ronda Rousey in a WWE ring. <clears throat> but over time, the things she said on social media, how she ended up burying the business that she was in, and then... She didn't like the fact that the fans turned on her. So instead of actually playing that up, she started being, it wasn't even her being a heel. It was more, she was being like an asshole, but trying to turn it as if the fans are assholes, which they can be. But it, it just went downhill very quickly. So we're going to check this out. Uh, this is by, once again, Stun. Oh, damn. What was that? Fucking, my voice is still trying to come back. What the fuck was that voice crack? Stunned by wrestling. Should be a good one. I already know y'all gonna clip it. I'm keeping it in. Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> um, Welcome back to the channel. Before we get into today, today's topic, it's important for me to highlight the view that the views and analysis shared in this opinion video are entirely my own i'd like to hear your take on the topic too so don't hold back in the comments agree disagree go ahead throw in your two cents let's see if Ronda we agree Rousey had a really promising start in wwe and it looked like she was a natural superstar yeah her debut at the royal rumble in 2018 was very exciting she was one of the hottest female athletes on the planet at the yeah. time and it was a huge deal to see her in a wrestling ring. Then she teamed up with Kurt Angle to face Triple H and Stephanie McMahon in one of the best matches of the night at yes. WrestleMania 34. Easily, or arguably, people would say that was the best match of the night. It was so it was it was better than people really expected, especially coming from Ronda being new in this industry. She did her thing. It was great. And once again. The fans were totally behind her. Yes. She was accepted as a true WWE superstar. Yes. From the moment that she arrived on the scene. And it was no secret that Rosie had been a fan of wrestling since she was a kid. We'd seen her sat in the front row at various shows in the past. Yes. And she'd appeared alongside The Rock at WrestleMania 31 a few years before. And of course, she adopted Roddy Piper's nickname. Yes, Rowdy Ronda Rousey seemed to have a lot of love for the business, and you could see the happiness on her face during the... That's what we initially thought. That's why it's very, very, very strange that she decided to shit on said business that she was, at one point, would be considered a fan of. His first appearances. She was so uh -oh. respectful of the business too, and that came across in the many interviews that she gave at the time. When she made her full-time debut in May 2018, she was booked in a way that made sense. She was kept strong without that negatively impacting the other women on the roster. Uh -huh. She got a Raw Women's title match against Nia Jax at Money in the Bank, which she lost thanks to Alexa Bliss cashing yeah. in her briefcase. But her popularity was undeniable. It already felt like the right time for her to ascend to the championship just because of how over she was with the fans. Yes. She went on to squash Alexa Bliss at SummerSlam to win the Raw Women's Championship. 
it felt like she was a WWE superstar and a worthy women's champion yes. rather than a guest MMA fighter who was being booked. And this is one of those things where a lot of people were high on Ronda. I was like, okay, this is awesome. This is this is great way to really push this women's side of wrestling, the, the women's revolution, which had already been going, but to really have Ronda as one of the four, one of the faces of it, as well, on top of the talented women we already have, let's go. I'm here for it. Over the other women on the roster, her title reign was pretty damn good, and there were a good few months where she was on top of the world, but it couldn't last forever, oh, and boy. she soon became victim to WWE's dumbass storytelling <laughs> at the end of 2018. Facts. When Becky Lynch returned to the company, she was quickly turned heel, and this was completely against the fans' wishes, but it was during that period where Vince McMahon was going directly against what the fans wanted. Yep. And so they entered Rosie into a program with Lynch in what was supposed to be a sort of Clash of the Titans star feud, but the roles were totally wrong. All the fans wanted to do was cheer Lynch, and so by default, they started booing Rosie. And here is... And they messed up. They messed up. They 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 pitted each other against each other too soon. They didn't really read the you do that. You built towards that later on. You don't do that immediately because you have the up the star power in Becky Lynch starting to rise. And you already have the star power in Ronda Rousey. Once you start doing this and pitting them against each other in a way, especially how they messed up with Becky at the beginning trying to turn her heel, it didn't matter. Once they tried to turn her heel, heel, they instantly, indirectly made Becky Lynch the most over person in the damn company, to be honest with you. More over than Ronda because people wanted Becky Lynch as the face. I think they should have took their time. They rushed this. It's where it became very clear how fragile Rosie's ego could be. For the very first time, she was experiencing a negative reaction from the yes. crowd, and she didn't like it one bit. Yeah. It seemed as though it would be Rosie versus Lynch at WrestleMania 35, and Rosie took to social media in a very hot headed way. Yeah. The online war between Rosie and Lynch. And here's, and here's the thing even if, okay, you want to build this towards WrestleMania, so you kind of. You kind of fast track it. Cool. It still falls down on Rhonda here because you gotta you gotta be able to explain this to her. Right now, Becky's hot. She's the hottest talent we have over you. I'm sorry. The fans have chose her. So now let's play into it. But instead of playing into the heel like character, she just started shitting on the fans and shitting on the business essentially. A very confusing one to witness, from a fan's perspective at least. As part of the storyline, Lynch was arrested on Raw, and she posted her mugshots on Twitter shortly thereafter. Yeah. It was obviously a work, it was part of the storyline, yeah. but Rosie decided not to play along. Nope. That's what I'm trying to do, dumbass. You hobbling around trying to be a ginger crutch ninja and taking fake prison photos in the hallway isn't helping. Lynch tried to discourage her from calling things fake, but Rhonda just got more fired up. Yep. F word, you mean fake? Fake like your nonsensical BS armbar that doesn't even work and just looks like you're holding the dick you wish you had. It became evident here that Rosie was every inch the WWE superstar until she was under scrutiny. Yeah. Rebecca Quinn, I don't care what the script says, I'm beating the living sh** out of you the next time I see you. I don't know whether this was Rosie genuinely going off script, or whether WWE were approving her words in order to build up the match at WrestleMania, but from a fan's perspective, seeing this kind of fourth wall breaking is very off-putting indeed. The way Rosie conducted herself on social media showed up the business and disrespected both her peers and the fans. It was a bad presentation mm -hmm. for a so-called superstar. The WrestleMania match ended up being between Rousey, Lynch and Charlotte Flair, with Lynch winning in the end. That was the end 
of Rousey's first run in the company, but it turned out that she was far from happy. Yeah. In an interview, she said, So it's just like, what am I doing it for if I'm not able to spend my time and energy on my family, but instead spending my time and energy on a bunch of fucking ungrateful fans that don't even appreciate me? I love performing. I love the girls. I love being out there. But at the end of the day, I was just like, fuck these fans, dude. This is how you you know she doesn't understand. It's wrestling. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Now they don't like you. Okay, be a heel. That, that it's, it's just such a simple. If the fans turn on you, you play it up. All right, you want to hate me? I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you the reason to hate me. But fuck the fans because they don't want to cheer me no more. What? Oh, my God. Dealing with fans that love you one moment and hate you the next is all part of being a pro wrestler. Thank it kind you. of comes with the territory. Yes. While she was away from WWE, Rousey took every opportunity to blast the fans, yep. both on Twitter and in interviews. It's hard not to take it personally from the fans because I don't go out there as... I mean, I do go out there as a character, but I'm also... I am actually Ronda Rousey, so I don't play Ronda Rousey on television. So sometimes I take it personally from the fans, not so much from the wrestlers, the fans I do. It's such pressure when I'm the last one on the show because I feel like it's my responsibility to retain the ratings and deliver. You know, you don't want people to be disappointed. Well, most people don't have a thick enough skin to be a WWE superstar. Facts. And it was this kind of talk that proved that Ronda was out of her depth in the wrestling business. Uh -huh. A return for Rousey looked like it was a long way off in 2021, and that seemed like it was for the best, for her own mental health, if nothing else. But then, for some reason, she showed back up at the 2022 Royal... You want to know what that some reason is? Money. All right, there we go. Because if you don't like the business, whatever, <clears throat> just cut ties with WWE. You don't like how the fans boo you? Cut ties. No? Okay. All right. How much How much was that check? Okay. Rumble. This time around, it didn't feel as special as back in 2018. And once again, she was being booked against type as a baby face. Yes. It was a baffling decision to bring her back as a good guy. That's why I was so confused. I'm like, what are they doing? Just book her as a heel. She can disrespect the fans. And it works. Now you can be you can be who you are on Twitter. I was so I'm like, why you bring up? It's not gonna work, and it didn't. It was stupid because she would have worked perfectly as a heel, yes. especially after everything she'd said about the fans. The obvious idea would have been for her to wrestle Becky Lynch at WrestleMania this time with Lynch as the face and yes. Ronda as the heel. But McMahon was still in his stubborn asshole mode and decided to book a match for her against Charlotte instead. Flair won at WrestleMania and then Rousey went on to win the championship from her at Backlash. In this second run, WWE encountered its biggest problem with booking someone like Ronda Rousey. She made everyone around her look weak yes. simply because of her real-life credentials. She lost the title when Liv Morgan cashed in her Money in the Bank briefcase and then she had a totally unbelievable feud with her. Yes. It was obvious that in reality, Rosie could kick the living shit out of Liv Morgan in a and real this, fight. And, and this is what I, I'm going to fucking say this at this particular time. Liv, I know she, she was really over. I understand this, but they hadn't presented Liv in a way where the where you can really buy in that she can hang or even beat Ronda. At least with Becky, they presented that. I know you would still have to suspend your disbelief, but they presented as Becky as this no nonsense ass kicker, talk trash, don't give a damn. She's not gonna give up. Charlotte. This premier wrestler lineage, a flair. What are we talking about? You know, they presented those ladies as somewhat competent in other areas and could possibly hang with Rousey. 
Live, unfortunately, at that time, that version of Live, no. So when they were feuding, I was like, what are we doing? There's no way this works. Because she Liv didn't even have the offense that made sense. Nor did she have like that super aggressiveness that would make sense to counteract Rousey. That's all I ever said. That's why I didn't believe it at that moment. That's all I'm saying. And yet she ended up in a two month long program with her where they traded the belt back and forth. It was really difficult to suspend your disbelief and believe that anyone on the roster was equal to Rousey apart from possibly Charlotte Flair or Becky Lynch. And while that yes. is totally out of Rousey's control, it's another reason why she made for a bad WWE superstar. Yes. And WWE had no idea what to do with her going forward. Nope. They ended up pairing her with Shayna Baszler, and the duo bullied their way through the women's division on SmackDown. And from the look on Rousey's face at the time, she didn't really want to be there. Her last match in the company was at SummerSlam 2023, where Baszler beat her in an MMA rules match. She announced her retirement soon after. Recently, she's revealed how unhappy she was during her second run with WWE. In her autobiography, she wrote, I called Triple H and told him I was done being a babyface. I was no longer capable of playing the good guy. I was done smiling and shaking hands with being shit on. I wanted to be able to defend myself, to say what was on my mind, it was my turn to turn. But as hard as I pushed, WWE pushed back. It just wasn't yet time, I was told. We had to build up to it further, the producers said. No. We needed to better develop the characters. They talked about it as if they were writing scripts for serious actors who wanted to know what is my motivation for this scene and not people who were smashing each other through tables. I went out every week, night after night, and I sold falls, hits and cheap shots like a f champ for WWE. But the fans hated it. The novelty of my arrival had worn off for everyone, including me. The story that WWE prides itself so much on telling was going nowhere. As months passed, I started to feel like WWE had sold me a bunch of bullshit. And you know what? That's the one thing I can agree with her on. I can agree with it. Agree what she said there. WWE fucked this up. She didn't handle it the best, but WWE fucked it up. Mainly Vince, because I'm sure Vince wanted her to be a face. No. No. WWE fucked this up. She should have been a heel. She even knew she wanted to be a heel. It would have worked a million times better. Because now she can really channel how she feels. And it would have worked. But WWE are idiots. And she probably would have stayed for a little bit longer. This is the problem with having an old senile man running the fucking show. Because he wanted his way. All the producers and the people that it was in his camp, they wanted it. Well, if Vince wanted this way, we got to keep pushing that. What, what story is there to tell? She doesn't like the fans. Stupid. It's WWE's fault. It's Vince's fault. For sure. She pours a lot more scorn on the company in her book, and she really doesn't hold back. No. And it's a shame, because that debut back in 2018 and her first few months with the company were absolutely fantastic. Great. But in the end, she wasn't cut out to be a WWE superstar in any way, shape or form. There was a total mismatch between her personality and the corporate WWE machine. Do you agree with my opinions in this video? Let this was a, this was a, a very good vid, man. I'm going to go ahead and give this a like. Y'all go subscribe to the guy. Stunned by wrestling. Checked out a few of his videos already. Make some great wrestling related content. I'm in agreement. Even though her first one was really great, you can tell she was not ready. She she wasn't. She didn't understand the concept of fans turning on you when someone else gets more popular. 
I'm not going to give her all the blame because WWE has to blame here too because they didn't help her out with the fuse they put her in. They didn't help her out by not turning her heel. They didn't help her out by at least giving someone to be the mouthpiece for her until she can get her bearings to be more comfortable talking to a live crowd. They didn't do none of that. They just, it's Ronda Rousey. People love her. And it worked for a while until it didn't. So, WWE takes some blame. She definitely takes some blame as well. Comment down below. Let me know. How do you guys feel about WWE's run as a whole? Do you guys agree with the fact that she wasn't good at being a WWE superstar? Or do y'all feel like it's a combination of Vince McMahon and management misusing her and Ronda not really understanding the business as as a whole y'all let me know down below but i appreciate all love support road to 150k and i'm still speed the youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace